What's good with y'all, man? My name is Tej, and in this video, I'm going to show y'all how to make a guitar beat from scratch for Gunna and Young Thug, similar to the style that like Wheezy or Taurus would make for them. Per usual, this beat is going to be made from scratch, so I'm going to show y'all my whole process of making it. And specifically for the guitar VSTs, I'm going to be using only stock FL Studio plugins. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you want to know the latest on what I'm working on, including these videos, be sure to follow me on Instagram. And with all that being said, Said, let's just hop right into the sample. So the tempo that I chose for this beat was 160 beats per minute. You could also do this in halftime at a slower tempo. Instead of 160, you can make it in like 80 beats per minute. For the first sound, I went into flex and I went to the essential guitars bank and got the Daisy Rock acoustic preset. And the progression that I followed for this one was a one, three, six, four progression. The key that the MIDI is in is D minor. So starting off with the first chord, I started with the root note of the scale, which is D. And then I just made this chord by just putting in D, F, and then A. So that's just the D minor triad. And then what I did is octave down the top note. And then I also added a bass note, which is basically just the root note, just copy down an octave and lower in velocity. And then for my next chord, I went to F major. This is practically the same thing as the minor chord, except the middle note is up by one half step. So similar to the last one, I constructed the chord and I moved the top note down an octave and then also layered a bass note with the root note of the chord. And then for A sharp major, I just copied this over and then just moved it down to the corresponding chord. And then for the last chord, pretty much just had it as like a lead up back into this, but the root note is lower because I didn't, in because I didn't invert the chord and I just put this an octave higher instead of lower than the root note. So it sounds like it's kind of going up and then leading back in, even though it's technically a lower scale degree. And so as for making it sound more realistic, there's a few things that it did to this so starting off with strumming it so originally the midi looked something more like this and then i hit alt s on my keyboard and then just using this menu and these few knobs here i just strummed the notes as you can see moving this knob to the right creates a strumming effect once i did that i randomized the velocities and i did that by hitting alt r on my keyboard and then in this menu i turned off the pattern mode and only kept the levels on. And then I just adjusted the velocity knob. And then finally, what I did is I went into the plugin menu and I went to the wrench icon here and then just went to the time section and went to the shift knob. I put this usually between about one fifth to one quarter of the entire circle. The shift makes it so that some of the notes hit off the grid. So it sounds a little more realistic, like you're actually playing a guitar. And I also added the shift to all of the following plugins, I think except for the vocal chops and the bass guitar. So by itself, the the first guitar sounds like this. And then for my next plugin, I opened up this classical acoustic preset. And how you access that is you go to your menu on the left here and you hit packs, go to instruments, guitar and classical acoustic and you can just drag that into your channel rack and i just took the same exact midi from the last pattern and just copied it and pasted it into here so by itself it sounds like this and layering both of the two together I routed both of those to the same mixer track using control L and I only put one effect, which was RC20. I went to the vinyl three preset and I turned off the noise and lowered down the wobble and distortion and put a little bit of space on it. The wobble just adds a little bit of detune and the space just adds a little reverb to it. And overall, this just gives the guitar a more vintage sound. So after I had the main guitar chords down, I put my top melody. So I went back into flex and I opened up the same essential guitars bank and I got the Ace Nylon Light preset. And I went into the MIDI and put in this top melody here, mostly just using the same notes that were in the chords and just kind of penciling in a melody that I thought was catchy, but also a little bit interesting.
And similar to the chords, I opened up another guitar sound to layer with that one. So I opened up Flex again and got the chill guitar preset. I just copied and pasted the exact same MIDI from the last pattern. And so the two layered together sound like this. And I routed both of those to the same mixer track once again. I opened up RC20 and I used really similar settings to how I did on the other guitar, except I turned the space a little bit down because these presets already had a little bit of reverb on them and also put like a slight low cut or low shelf on it to cut out a little bit of the picking noises and some of the muddier lower frequencies. So after that, I opened up my bass guitar sound. Once again, I went back into flex and I got this Temptated bass fingered preset. And with this, I was basically just copying the bass notes from the chords. So just going into here, I just copy these notes here. All I did was just add a couple notes just to make it sound a little more lively. And then at the end, I just put in an octave for the A sharp. And then after my bass guitar, I put in some vocal chops using Arcade. I went to the Red Lotus Bank in the Distant Voices line. I turned all these knobs down except for the airspace. I just kept that how it was originally. And I just put in these vocal chops right here. So for effects in the mixer track, I put on a low shelf again, just to cut out some of the muddy frequencies. And then I opened up Fruity Reverb and I went to the venue preset and I just adjusted the cut knobs and the decay. And then I opened up Fruity Love Filter and I went to the low pass two preset. So once I had all my stems in the MIDI figured out, I went to the mixer tracks and I armed each of them and hit Alt R. And in this menu, I set the mode to pattern and cut the remainder for the tail and then hit start. After that, I dragged each of the clips into the playlist and then I set the mode to stretch and I pitched each of them up by 200 cents or two half steps. So since the MIDI was in D minor, the finished sample is now an E minor. And once I had that, I arranged the stems and rendered out the final loop as an audio clip. Once I had the rendered out loop, I imported it into a new FLP and I set the project tempo to 160. I took the stems and arranged them to my liking, added the drums and finished the beat. And these type of drums are pretty similar to like the Wheezy or Taurus style drums where they add a lot of bounce using perks and snares and their hi-hats. So starting off with the first drum sound, I just have a clap. It's just a normal slap clap and I put it on the third beat of every measure. Next, I put in my hi-hat and it looks pretty similar to a two-step pattern, but if you look at the velocities, I went in and I adjusted a lot of them just to add that extra bounce. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you know I like to edit the velocity a lot on my hi-hats. Overall, I was just trying to have a little bit of fun with some of the rolls and how it kind of fit well with some of the other higher pitch drum sounds. Next, I put in my snare sound. And for this beat, I was trying to do a little bit more with the snare because I left myself more space with the hi-hats and melodically there weren't a lot of stems or anything. So I just tried to add a little bit more bounce with some lower, with some lower pitched or lower velocity snares. And then next I added this perk and I just added it in the same spots on each of the four measure bars, which is the end of the third and the fourth beat. And then next I added my open hat, and this is primarily meant to layer with the 808 and some of the other drum sounds. And then lastly, I added my 808 pattern. And similar to the bass guitar pattern, it's only really following the root notes of the chords. I didn't add any rolls or anything like that because I felt like I already did enough with some of the other drum sounds already.
So that's gonna do it for me. I hope you all enjoyed the video and found it pretty helpful. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. Leave any recommendations or feedback in the comments and that's gonna do it for me. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.